Okay, so now we want to connect what we know about torsional stress uh, and deformation to shaft design, because all of this stuff in def bods is really about design. We want to be able to understand what kind of stresses um, uh, a particular material is going to be under. And so uh, let's go ahead and see if we can make that connection here. The first thing that we can talk about is power. So a lot of the times when we're interested in torsional stress, we're interested in shafts, right? A shaft that's turning and that's pulling uh, or turning something with it, right? With a gear or with uh, a pulley system like the one shown here. Uh, and we can talk about the power of a shaft as a matter of the torque, that is the basically the kind of uh, angular force that's being used here, uh, multiplied by the radial velocity of that shaft. And that tells us uh, how much power is being um, transferred using our, um, using our shaft system. Now, this means that if we know the power of an engine and we know its radial velocity, uh, we can design a shaft using a rearrangement of the torque formula. Okay, so we know what that T max is, um, but if we know power um, and we know its velocity, that allows us to solve for torque. This is geometry, this is geometry, and then we're able to solve for an allowable stress. All right, so that power equation will tell us um, in a uniform uh, shaft, the, the relationship between uh, power and an allowable stress. A lot of times though, we're gonna have a shaft that has um, irregularities in it, right? So here's one where we get, a, there's a little key uh, that keeps that gear in, uh, in place uh, relative to the shaft. And not surprisingly, on that shaft, you're gonna get higher stresses near that key. And so as we did with axial stresses, we can talk about stress concentration and we can use a K coefficient um, to tell us, oh, that's gonna, there's gonna actually be a higher stress in this situation than there would be if these were uh, just uniform circular shafts. Uh, and so if we throw that K into our torsional stress equation, um, this is gonna be one or higher, um, which means that for a given torque and a given geometry, um, the maximum stress is gonna be higher. And so we'll have to uh, either use a stronger metal uh, or figure out another way uh, to make sure that that fits within the allowable stress. We can find those Ks. We're, we're not going to do that in the, in the lecture now, but um, as there might be some in the homework uh, where you have to look up a K and figure out, okay, how does this K factor fit in? Works exactly the same as the axial stress concentration factors, though. So let's do a little uh, problem here. So here we have a, a, a 1.5 inch diameter shaft. Um, it's got a bearing at A and B, and then it has three gears here. Um, and a torque is being applied uh, to each of those torques uh, by, by a large gorilla, of course. Why wouldn't you have a gorilla applying uh, some torques to your um, to your shaft here. And so we've got a torque here uh, and we've got another torque here and we're gonna try to explore what this uh, torque T has to be. So um, the monkey, uh, after seeing the two gorillas, wants to apply a torque T here um, that's gonna balance this um, and give us a static situation, uh, but then we'll also start to develop a shear stress uh, within that section uh, AA. Good job, monkey. He's keeping things in order. So what's the torque applied by the monkey? I'm going to give you a chance to figure that one out. That one's a uh, pretty straightforward little statics problem. Probably do it in your head.
Good. And we'll move on. And so the little monkey is helping, uh, helping our small gorilla by adding a little 12.5 kip, kip inch torque. Now we want to use the method of sections to find the internal torque at section A. Um, and so you'll want to use the same kind of process that we've used to find internal moments uh, up until now. What's our internal moment at A? All right, uh, and pause if you need to, but we're going to move on to the next slide. So now we know that we have an internal torque of 12.5 in here, and hopefully you figured that out, right? If we make a section here and just look over here, there's no torque applied here. So that torque has to be balanced by the internal torque here in order to keep this section static. Um, <clears throat> Now we want to find the maximum stress uh, at the outer rim of the shaft, right? So that's going to be at C um, because of the way that stress increases linearly as we move out towards the edge of a circular shaft. So here's our torsional stress equation. We need to find the polar moment of inertia and think about what data we need to solve J for J. What is J a function of? Oh, I've got some choices. There are your choices. <laughs> I bet you could have answered that anyway. All right, and we'll move on to the next slide. And so J is the second moment of area, and so it's just a function of geometry. Uh, and we can solve that relatively easily with, uh, J is pretty easy with circles. Uh, it's just that uh, radius, remember to use the radius and not the diameter, uh, to the fourth power. Um, and we get our J value here. Notice the units of that second moment of area. They're sort of odd units. Um, but that makes sense, right? Because we've got, we're taking a, a length to the fourth power. But you can see that a, a, even, you know, let's say a, a one inch, you know, we increase the size of our radius here by, by you know, 33% if we go to one inch. Um, now we've all of a sudden got a, um, uh, let's see, this would be about 1.6 times one. And so we've really tripled our, the size of our uh, J just by increasing um, the size of that radius by about a third. Um, so that fourth power uh, makes, really weights that, uh, those larger radius values higher. Now we can calculate the stress at the outer surface because we know J. Now see if you can figure out what the shear stress at the radius of 0.15 inches would be. In other words, a fifth of the way out of the, towards the radius. What would the shear stress be? And once you get, you know, come up with, think about how does shear stress change as we move out along the radius. Uh, and then you can use that other version of the torsional stress equation to double check your answer. And that's it for this one.